Today's show is about how to target email lists with Google Ads. Um, so there's a, a number of things to think about here. Um, so we're going to cover how to upload an email list to Google Ads, first of all. Um, talk about Google Ads um, customer match, which is what this is, customer match audience sizes. So there are some minimums depending on the type of campaign you're running. Um, the types of campaigns you could think about uh, running with uh, customer match or email lists. Um, and there's some quite clever stuff you can do here that I'm going to show you a bit later in the video. Um, and then uh, using similar audiences, so a bit like Facebook does, you can create similar audiences from your email lists uh, and target those with your campaigns. And then uh, some more advanced stuff, some more sneaky clever stuff that you might think about doing uh, to get the most from your campaigns. Um, if you are using Google Ads or you're thinking about using Google Ads, uh, subscribe right now because there's tons of stuff coming up over the next few weeks uh, about how to optimize your Google Shopping, Google Ads, YouTube campaigns, that kind of stuff. Um, if you enjoy this, uh, please do give us a like, really appreciate it. And if you're stuck on anything or something isn't clear, please do ask in the comments and we'll definitely try and get uh, to answer those for you. So first of all, um, how do you upload an email list to uh, your Google Ads account? So head into the audience manager. The quickest way to do this is uh, GT and then type audience and then head to audience manager. Um, and then, uh, weirdly, this isn't a custom audience, this is a remarketing audience. Uh, click the plus button and then click customer list. Uh, give your audience a name, um, the list members, uh, which I'm going to assume you're uploading an email list here, um, and then upload plain text data. Uh, and there's a specific format with this template. Uh, I'll put a link in for you so you can find this easily. Um, so you can upload plain text data, uh, CSV, comma separated value format, um, or you can upload hashed data. The, the difference between the two is with hashed data, that means that the information is protected. Um, Google uh, employees couldn't actually see that data. It's kind of encrypted. Um, so up to you whether you want to encrypt that data or not. Either way, Google isn't going to have uh, to use that data to do anything else with it apart from what you're doing with your campaigns. Um, so, uh, you know, just take that file and then upload it. Google will take about 24 hours. Uh, I'd leave a little bit longer, but it will take about 24 hours to process that and then match the email addresses that you have in that list to uh, users um, that Google has in its system. Uh, more on that in a moment. There are some minimums. Um, in terms of membership duration, so how long will people be a member of this audience from the time that you upload them? So if you're thinking about uploading lists of customers or lists of people that subscribe to your newsletter or something like that, um, that haven't heard from you maybe for three years, you may want to think about whether you want all of those people in there. Um, and if you are regularly just adding more and more people, uh, appending them to this list, um, how long do you want them to stay in that audience? And that's going to depend on what type of campaigns you are running. Um, so just think about that. Um, you could obviously just keep um, refreshing that data constantly if you wanted to. So, you know, upload a brand new one, take your data out of your system for people who've interacted, uh, bought from your e-commerce store, something like that in the last 180 days, for example, or maybe the last 12 months, um, and you refresh that every month. So there's always the last 12 months of data, or you could just keep appending and then expire them after 12 months. Maybe you could do something like that. And then we can have a description that's going to help you later understand what the hell you did when you created um, this audience. Um, so yeah, head in there, upload your data, make sure it's in the right format, use the template, um, and then uh, let Google go ahead and go and match that to uh, to its own data and create you an audience. So that's the, the first part out of the way. So the next thing to understand is that there are some limitations as to the sizes of the audiences that you can use for different types of campaigns. So let's talk about um, the minimums uh, firstly. So the first thing to understand is that you have to have a minimum list of 1000 email addresses in that email file um, for Google to accept it. Okay, um, I would think probably below that um, 
if it's questionable whether it's worth doing, and certainly you can't upload three or four email addresses. That would be a gross invasion of privacy. So you know you would get data back about a very small set of users. So minimum upload is one thousand email addresses. Now the next thing you need to understand is that that Google isn't going to match all one thousand of those email addresses with users of Google. So what it's matching is the primary email address that that user is logged into Google with when they're browsing and surfing around. So if uh, you're logged into Google because you're using Gmail, that kind of stuff, then you're logged into Google, you're browsing around, and Google knows that session for that user is tied to that email address. So that's how it's matching that information. So it's matching around 35%. So um, if you want a thousand people in your audience, you want to be aiming for about three times that figure. Um, so when we get into some of the more advanced stuff, uh, just remember these numbers um, because you're going to need uh, a reasonable number of people to make your campaigns worth work and to make them worthwhile doing in the first place. So if you're going to use this um, audience, uh, this email list on Google search, uh, and I'll show you how to do that in, in a moment, um, then you need 1000 uh, users matched. Okay, so you want to be aiming to upload about 3000 email addresses to get around that 1000. You may have less, you may have more than that, but aim for about 3000. Uh, you know, if you're around two and a half thousand or 2000, then upload it and test it and just see if it's eligible. If it's not, then you're going to have to maybe change your parameters or wait till you've got more email addresses. So that's with Google search. Um, with Google display, uh, it's kind of better news. So this is where we target people with banner ads or maybe video ads, that kind of stuff. Um, and you need uh, 100 again matched. So you're uploading about 300 email addresses uh, or more. I would strongly recommend more because otherwise you're targeting a very small audience and your ads aren't really going to show that much necessarily. So, um, you know, I'd probably be aiming for, for probably five, six, seven hundred, um, you know, that, that kind of thousand minimum you've got in your, your email database in the email list anyway. Um, and then if you want to run uh, YouTube video ads or Gmail ads, again, you need uh, a minimum of 100 people in that audience too. So let's talk about um, the types of campaigns uh, that you can use this email list for. So the first one is um, RLSA or remarketing lists or search ads. And there are two ways of, of doing this. So the first is your traditional search and Google shopping campaigns. So with search, you'll be bidding on keywords um, or you would upload your product inventory. Now, traditionally, you would have a campaign for specific types of keywords, each with their ad groups, or you'd have uh, your whole shopping inventory or maybe a section of your shopping inventory in a shopping campaign and your keywords in a search campaign. And you would just target people searching for your products or your keywords, no problem. With your email list, you can, uh, just with this example, say, I only want to show my ads to people who are in my, who match this email list. So um, you could use things that are, uh, use a bit on keywords maybe that are much lower intent. So generally with a normal search campaign, you wouldn't bid on gift ideas because it's really low intent. It's not going to convert very well, pretty poor. But if you have a gift e-commerce store and you have a list of your customers who have bought from you before that you have uploaded, those people who have bought from you in the last six months or 12 months that are typing gift ideas, hey, they already know your brand, they already trust your brand. So actually those lower intent uh, search terms become much more valuable to you because they're much more likely for those specific users on your email list to come back and buy from you. So what you're, what you're targeting there is the two together. So these search terms or matching my products in my Google Shopping campaign, but only when the, those people searching match my email list. So that's the, the first option. The next option is pretty much the same. So you would have your normal um, search campaigns or your normal shopping campaigns, and then you add your email list as observation or what we used to call bid only, and then you can do a bid adjustment. So exactly the same uh, campaign structure as you would have now, but what you might want to do there is increase the bids for people who match your email list that you uploaded by 30% because we know those people have already bought from you, they're already on your email list, whatever it might be, and therefore they're more likely to buy so we can afford to pay more per click. 
Um, so that's kind of overlaying. So you're still targeting everyone who's going to match your keywords or your products, but we're prepared to pay more for those people who are in our email list rather like we would for our um, remarketing list, retargeting people who have been on our website already. Um, so that's uh, how you overlay that to search and shopping. The next one is uh, Google Display. So remember, we can target um, content across the web for um, you know particular keywords. So you know if you're selling televisions, you might bid on uh, Sony TV, Samsung TV, you know those kinds of things, and then Google will match your ads to content which features those keywords. Or you can go a bit more broad and target topics, um, you know, uh, in market audiences, things like that. So people who are in the market for a TV, but only when those people are also in your email list. So the two together, a bit like that search campaign. And then the next option is similar to how we did with the uh, observation bid only um, over the top. So we're targeting everybody reading content about our topic, about our subject. But then we increase the bids for our email list um, because they're more valuable to us. Um, the next one is uh, YouTube campaigns. So if you want to uh, promote your video campaigns, um, again, you target uh, the, the, by content generally. Um, so people watching videos about a cer certain thing or search campaigns, similar to how we would on Google search. You can do that on YouTube. Um, but again, only when those people are members of in, in that email list that they've matched. Um, so again, maybe uh, you're nurturing this email list, keeping your brand present and in front of these people. Maybe you've got a promotion for a particular product or service and you want to target um, that audience on YouTube, but you don't want to target the whole world. Um, and the next one is then uh, your email list uh, targeting um, people using Gmail, using Gmail ads. Um, so this isn't sending them emails, remember, these are ads that appear next to the emails that they are reading in the Gmail interface in the same way we, we talked about before. The next thing that you can do, um, but think carefully about this, and I'll explain why in a moment, is to take your email list of 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 people and then say, hey Google, look, these are my really valuable customers. Um, I want to target similar a similar audience to these people. But this is a very different strategy. So be careful with this. Don't just go crazy and say, well, here's my email list. There's a similar audience. Increase the bids by 40%. Off you go. The email list that you've got are people who have given you their email address. So you can't buy a list and do this. Remember, these are your customers and you shouldn't be uploading bought lists or anything like that. Um, the email addresses uh, that you have are people who already know and trust your brand. The ads that, and the response that you are going to get and the types of campaigns, the types of offers and promotions that you might want to do with your email list of people who know and trust your brand are very different from people who are similar to that list that have never heard from you. So think about um, the email list as your friends and your customers and the similar audience are strangers. They don't know your brand. So the conversion rate from that similar audience is going to be um, much, much lower than the conversion rate that you would get from people who know and trust your brand already. So um, similar audience can work really well, but I would have a campaign targeting a similar audience with a particular offer to introduce the brand um, and get to know the brand first before you start pitching discounts and special offers and this kind of stuff. Um, so you might want to do a kind of similar audience, um, do some introductory things just to encourage the traffic through to the website, create some awareness, some interest in the, in the product or service that you provide, and then use your remarketing to then nurture that audience and maybe capture an email address. And then those people end up in your email campaigns um, because they've registered for a discount or some sort of guide or um, whatever it might be. So how about some advanced email targeting options then? So um, remember, if you have a CRM system or you're using something like MailChimp or uh, maybe Magento or Shopify or any, any number of these um, kinds of systems, um, you should be able to export the data that you have um, to segment your email list. So remember that you need those minimum audience sizes. So there's no point in kind of getting the top 300 highest spenders on your e-commerce store. 
because um, the audience isn't big enough to do any targeting. Um, you know, again, remember we need a minimum of a thousand email addresses uploaded, and we need a minimum of a hundred on display and YouTube and Gmail, and we need a minimum of a thousand matched on search for the remarketing list. So remember those numbers. Um, but you could export a list of the highest spenders in your on your e-commerce store for the last twelve months, and we could do some targeted campaigns with specific products for those users. We could um, target people to get some of those customers back that maybe haven't bought from you for the last six months. If you can export that data, you can use that, upload it, and then match it for targeting. How about if uh, an audience has bought a specific product or bought a particular brand? So maybe they've bought a higher value brand or maybe they've bought a cheaper brand. Um, how about those users that have clicked a link in an email campaign but didn't buy anything? So if you have that data, that could uh, be a really powerful method of um, targeting those users. And how about gender specific campaigns? So if you know that uh, women buy particular products, uh, men buy other products, then you could create specific campaigns targeting those users with specific offers uh, products or services that relate to that. And what about those users that bought from you in the run-up to last Christmas? So maybe you're running a campaign for the two months running up to this Christmas and you want uh, to target that list of people who bought from you, bought gifts from you last Christmas maybe. Uh, or maybe the people that took up those Black Friday offers. Um, we should start targeting them with some Black Friday offers as well because we know that they bought from us at that time. So let's get those offers out there. Um, so there's some um, some pretty cool uh, things you can do, but remember you need the audiences to be of a reasonable size to be able to do this. Otherwise, um, if they're too small, they're not going to work at all. Um, and if they're a little bit bigger, maybe they're just not worth the time and effort that you're going to go into. So you want these to be kind of reasonably big um, to give you enough data and, and give you enough um, kind of value of doing this in the first place. So. Um, the next thing uh, that we can do, as I mentioned earlier, is um, with, a, with a search campaign or Google Shopping, um, we tend to use negative keywords to exclude a lot of that low intent traffic. So like I said before, th people that are just looking for um, I don't know, an accountant or they're typing something to do with VAT or um, they're looking for national insurance contributions or things like that and they're not they're not kind of high intent sales keywords or maybe it's someone just looking for gift ideas for him or gift ideas for her you know those kinds of things they don't tend to convert very well but we could use a customer match uh, campaign um, by uploading your email address and say, well, look, you know, these guys, we know they're our highest value customers or we know that, um, you know, they've bought from us in the last 12 months. And although they're looking for, you know, although their, their intent is fairly low, we know that they trust that our brand. So actually we can bid on them uh, on those keywords, but only when they match our email list. So that's quite a clever way that, that you can um, extract some more value from that. And of course, those clicks will get people to your website, which will then fit into your remarketing list, which you should be using for other campaigns. So that's a quick whistle stop tour of customer email match campaigns in Google Ads. Um, if you do have questions uh, or concerns about that, if you're not sure about something, then do ask in the comments and, and we'll get to that absolutely. Um, if you'd like us to take a look at what you're doing with Google Ads and help you improve, um, you know, 30 to 100% improvement in um, conversions, uh, the number of sales, the return on the ad spend and the investment you're getting, that's the kind of stuff we do um, day in, day out. So um, you can reach me at Tillerson on Twitter um, or you can find us at tillerson.co.uk.